King Jesus is here tonight. Hallelujah. The King, the King is alive. The King is here tonight. Isn't that just awesome? Hallelujah. We don't come here to serve a dead God. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. The King is here tonight. Amen. Have you come expecting? Come expecting tonight. Glory to the Lord. As Maureen and Beverly were worshipping, we were all worshipping. I just seen gifts falling from heaven. Is that going to be you that's yes. going to receive oh, the gifts? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Gifts falling from Amen. heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got some receivers here tonight. Yes. Receivers here Amen. tonight. Amen. Amen. Gifts. Yes. Gifts. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some greedy and hungry ones here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are the greedy ones. Amen. Hallelujah. Receivers, hungry. Hallelujah. They're not going to go away empty handed. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The living God is in our midst. That's pretty special. And I think that's so awesome that we can worship the living God, that there's such a freedom and such a liberty. We must never take that for granted, that we can worship God. Amen. Liberty and freedom. We can dance if we like. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Amen. Amen. We don't have to sit there like a, those, those Indian Comanches or whatever they call them, you know, <laughs> sitting there. We can dance. Hallelujah. We can be free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen. There is liberty. There's freedom where the Spirit of God is. Hallelujah. And we can come in with a smile on our face and we can rejoice because God is for us. And if He's for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Devash, I've just seen like a massive boulder in front of you. And I just see the hand of God just driving that boulder away. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't know your name. Can I pray for you? Your name? Lily Lily Beat. That's lovely. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for Lily Beat. Father God, your hand is upon her, Lord God. I just see that there's been many storms that you've gone through, many storms that you've weathered. You've been in a school of hard knocks. You've been in, in, I just see like a lot of rejection being all around you. But the Lord's just touching you tonight. He's touching your emotions. I just see he's pouring healing balm into areas that have been bruised, that have been wounded. Even when you were a little girl growing up, I just see that at times you felt like the black sheep. At times you just felt like you were a castaway where you were just neglected but the Lord's touching you tonight he's pouring his healing balm and he's wrapping his loving arms around about you and I just see that God is going to move mightily on you he's going to restore I just see the spirit of God breathing ruach breath of God upon you and at times when you've gone through trials and testing there's been times that you thought you could never get up again you could never uh, forget what had happened to you but the Lord's touching you tonight by his spirit God God is just moving upon you tonight. And I just see there's all broken pieces around about you, shattered dreams. It's like your heart has been wounded. And I just see the spears, like someone has speared you deep. And it's like there's a deep wounding gone in. I pull that spear out tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, you pour your healing balm. You pour your healing balm into those areas that have been, Lord, deeply wounded, where she's been deeply wounded, Lord God. You minister your healing touch tonight. Wrap your loving arms around about her, Lord Jesus. Oh, wrap your loving arms around about her. Comfort her tonight, Lord God. You restore all the years that she's lost, all the years, Lord God, even childhood years, Lord God, even, Lord God, womanhood, Lord God, where it's been robbed from her, Lord God. Lord, today I thank you that you're going to restore, restore, restore the years that the locusts have eaten, Lord God. I thank you that you're going to bless her mightily. As from this moment on, I thank you and I declare Things change, things change, things change in the spirit, in the natural, things change for you. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you're going to bless this woman from this moment on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Is Ma- uh, Mandela there? Mandela. Yes, Mandela's there. There was a scripture um, I wanted to give you this morning, Mandela. And uh, I'll read it out tonight. It's out of the Amplified Bible. And this is for Travon and Mandela. Psalm 86, verse 17. It says, Show me a sign of your evident goodwill and favour that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, will show your approval of me when you help and comfort me. Hallelujah. Some of us can receive that for ourselves tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for Paul tonight. Thank you for Paul tonight. Hallelujah. Paul, you are not alone. You are not alone. God's been doing a deep work on the inside of you. I just see that he's been, there's been like a purging going on, a purging going on. God is just cleaning house on the inside. There's some things that had to go. There's some things that couldn't remain. Hallelujah. Because you're a man that gets before God and you want to be purified. You want to have clean hands and a pure heart. And I just see that God is just doing what you've been asking him to do. Hallelujah. He's doing that. He's doing the things on the inside. And it's like when you put a car into the the garage and you get it tuned up and and then you take it home and like, wow, that sounds better. That sounds really good. There's a power in that motor. Hallelujah. And I I just hear a new sound coming out of you, Paul, a new sound as you've come before the living God. God is just touching you tonight, touching you and accepting you as a son, as a son. Hallelujah. God's hand is upon you to deliver you and set you free. I just see there's times that you are like you know, going through frustration and there's battles on the inside. Like Paul the Apostle said, fears on the outside and uh, trouble on the outside, fears within. It's like things that are going on inwardly, like there's an inward battle, but the Lord's bringing peace tonight. Peace tonight in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle. He's bringing peace. Hallelujah. And He's just the glory and the lifter of your head. The glory and the lifter of your head. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Chitara, I just see that there's hurdles in front of you. Hurdles. Hallelujah. And you are going to come through those hurdles. You're going to come through those hurdles. God's going to release you. And I just see a song of praise going to come forth out of your mouth. And and you're just going to begin to speak in the Spirit. I just see in the Spirit and it's going to be bold and it's going to be strong and it's going to be aggressive. Hallelujah. I just see a woman, a mighty warrior that God's been preparing behind the scenes. You're just going to emerge as a mighty woman of the Spirit and God is going to download. Hallelujah. Things from heaven. Download where people have had to work for something, ask for something for years and years and years. I just see God's going to download truth, download revelation and He's going to set you free. He's going to set you free. Glory to the Lord. I just see like a rocket, you're going to take off. You're going to take off. You're going to have such a boldness in you. You're going to witness when you go to work. You're going to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ and you're going to think, wow, I never used to be like this. What's happened to me? I just see a woman walking in the supernatural power of God. Hallelujah. God's going to strengthen you. He's going to strengthen you. And it's like your past is going to be past at last. God is going to release you from the past. It's not going to have a hold on you. It's not going to be tormenting you. It's not going to be harassing you. It's not going to be striking with fear at you. God is going to heal you and release you and set you free. And I just see that a new song is going to come forth out of your mouth and you're going to find a new joy and a new strength and you're going going to go forward and you're going to look forward to waking up in the morning and facing the new day because you're going to have a lot to live for. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. It's Desley, isn't it? Desley. Hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you for Desley. Desley, I just see it's a time when, when God is just answering prayer, answering prayer answering prayer. You've been a woman that's persevered. You've endured. You've stood there when the others begin to give up. It's like you just stood there and you've prayed and prayed and you've persevered. And God is answering prayer, answering prayer. You're seeing a turnaround. You're seeing a change. And everything the enemy meant for evil, God is turning around. God is working out all things together for good to those that love Him and are called according to His purpose and plan. He's working those things out. And you are going to see awesome things. 
things. God is going to do miracles. I just see the miracles, the miraculous, the miraculous. God has gifts in store for you. He has blessings in store for you that you have not seen yet. And you're going to witness and you're going to see the manifestation of the power of God. You're going to have a new spring in your step, girl. Hallelujah. You're going to, I just see you crushing the plans of the enemy, crushing the plans of the enemy. You're a woman that knows your authority. You're a woman that knows your boundaries. You're a woman that spent time in God's presence. You're a woman that has walked with the living God. You've talked with Him. You've walked with Him. And it's time to see the blessing. I just see it's a new page. It's a new page, a new chapter in your life. And you are going to witness the reward of the wicked. That You're going to witness the things that the enemy's been doing. You're going to see God's hand upon the enemy. And you're just going to know, God, I've had the victory in this situation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just see, you're going to be filled with a new joy and a new peace. And God is going to bring healing in hearts, healing in relationship, healing in bodies. Hallelujah. He's going to do things that you've cried out for. Hallelujah. Awesome. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Rochelle. I know I prayed for you this morning. I don't know what I'm going to say to you. But Rochelle, you are a beautiful woman of God. I just see a woman that's like the Scripture in Corinthians says, as we behold Him, we are changed. We are transformed. And Rochelle, as you be behold the Lord more and more every day. You are just going to change. I just see an inward change on the inside. You're just going to know God's power. You're going to know God's presence. You're going to know His healing touch. You're going to know His comforting arms. You're going to know the provision of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in one. God is going to pour out blessings upon you, blessing upon your children, blessing upon your husband. You're going to know that God is for you. Hallelujah. You're going to see a greater reward, greater reward. There's greater blessings that is coming. Hallelujah. And I just see as you behold the Lord, behold the Lord in everyday things and the things that you've had to go through. God is going to strengthen you even more on the inside. You're going to rise up. Hallelujah. And you're going to be fitting in exactly the place that God's been calling you. God is positioning you and you're just going to know that you know in your heart of hearts, this is what God wants me to do. This is what God's calling me to do. And you're just going to have that peace and it's going to settle in your heart and you're just going to know that that's what God wants you to do. And I just see confusion fleeing, confusion going, hallelujah, because God is not the author of confusion, but He's the God of peace. And I just see the peace of God just coming upon you in a mighty, mighty way. You are a beautiful, awesome woman of God. Hallelujah. I will dance, I will sing, I'll be mad for my king. Amen. Nothing, Lord, is hindering this passion in my soul. Thank you, Lord. Your, when the other was giving you a word, that your confidence is totally in the Lord, in his righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But it's his righteousness. You know why? Because he was a perfect man. There was no sin in him, in his righteousness, because he was a perfect man. Everything of your past is being wiped away, because he loves you passionately. Regardless of what you have done and said or what you think, it's his righteousness. Our righteousness is no good at all. There is nothing good. Paul said it. There is nothing good in my flesh. It's for so many who's listening to me on YouTube, anywhere around the world. Your righteousness is in Christ is in Jesus Christ, not all your good works. When your righteousness is in Christ, you will love him passionately and the good works will come out of that. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Because I can do a lot of work and even throw my body into the fire and feed all the poor. I can do it in the flesh. Witchcraft is a work of the flesh. But because of my holy God, a perfect God, a sinless God, he poured his blood for you and me. It's his righteousness, not because I polish my life. The more I polish, the duller I look. But when you grasp that love, 
the goodness of God will turn you into repentance. Nothing else. All your works is like filthy rags. That doesn't mean to say you're not going to feed the poor, or look after the widows. But when your heart is right, you will be driven with passion from heaven. Not self-righteousness. Prosperity in her church has gone quiet on me. <laughs> now it's, it's, it's full of works. 90% of the church, I believe, is full of works. I believe 95%. Your gifts will operate without repentance. You can save a thousand people and clap your hands. And you'll get a thousand Christians clapping your hands and tapping you on the shoulder. But what you store up in heaven that is going to remain when you are driven by the spirit of the living God because salvation does not belong to you or healing does not belong to you. It belongs to the King of kings and the Lord of lords and he works through you to heal that person or lead that person to the Lord so he gets the glory. Amen? Amen. If anybody's healed, do you take the glory? If they are not healed, do you get disappointed? <laughs> do you get discouraged? Think of that one for a little while. Amen. It's not by might, not by power. Whatever you do, you are doing it unto the Lord. But it's getting that loving God, that perfect love, church, will cast out all fear. The only love that comes, how do you know the Father when you know the love of the Son? He touched me when I was blind and lost. He touched you and he saved you. And he's still loving you, although you fell a thousand times. When you grasp that love and you know that it's his righteousness that you are standing before the Father, you will give up anything for him. And you will walk in that holiness and that sanctification. And you will have people leading you. To, they will be following you. You won't be following them and trying to lead them to the Lord. There are times God will lead you anyway. He'll lead a donkey. <laughs> but you want to be driven by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Uh, a, a couple of people got something. A couple of people got something during worship. Not, not a testimony during worship. Yes, come. Got that other mic, please. This lady, isn't it? Yes. Jesus was sitting there and there was a maypole with all the, the streamers going out and we were all dancing around and he was just sitting there and he was just enjoying seeing all his children and he said, be free, be free, be as little children, be my little children because I love you and, and it was so beautiful, you know, everyone was just dancing around in the beautiful colours and Everybody was free. So he said, just walk in that freedom. You know, be as little kids. Spend time. I spend time with my grandchildren. I get down on the floor and we play and we giggle and everything. So that's how he sees us. We are his children, his little children. And he wants us to be free. He doesn't want us to be... He wants us to be free. And, and to, to work at that, you know... Very to good. Dance, Amen. To dance. Get up Amen. and dance and... Hallelujah, I will dance, I will sing, I'll be mad for my king, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, go for it, amen. Anyone else, quickly, you got something during worship? Anyone on Zoom? Come on, church, step forward. If I had a highlighter, which I do, <laughs> and I listen to the morning message uh, before coming to church here and tonight, I would highlight the Lord's presence. And this verse, the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. Cancer melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Amen. So in his presence is fullness of joy. Father, I just want to thank you for your agape love 
your presence, Lord, that brings forth your joy, that brings forth your salvation. I thank you, Lord, that thousand, Lord, will fall by my side, 10,000. Your mm. ratio is pretty big, Lord. You're the greatest mathematician. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. In that <laughs> greater measure, Amen. spirit without Amen. measure, dunamis power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Very good. He is. Amen. He wrote that thousands of years ago before the mathematicians found out. Amen. Anything. One thousand. Very good. A thousand will fall on my side. Ten thousand at my right hand. And nothing by any means. You want to stand up? Everybody's ready. Anyone on Zoom have got something quickly? I'll just stick my communion. Thank you, Lord. You got something, Jenny? No. No. That's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got something? Okay. Go on, quickly, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, just during worship, I saw really, it was like I was in Antarctica and you know how like the waters are like that beautiful, cold, but just beautiful. I saw streams of just beautiful, crystal clear waters and just streaming. As they came down, I saw our forest starting to bear fruit and the fruit was the most beautiful, sweet fruit I have ever seen. And then as I kept going down the stream, I saw little seedlings getting thrown. And then those seedlings started flowering. Wow, that's very appropriate, isn't it? Ch little children. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? And Belinda. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It's a little more like heaven where you are. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that we could come boldly to the throne of grace, Lord. Only because of your blood, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are made a new and a living way, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father. Reveal your love in a measure that we have never known before. That we will serve you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, Lord. Your love, Lord, through this broken body, Lord. As we remember what you have done on Calvary, Lord. Remember wholeheartedly, Lord, that we could worship you. Every time I think of you, the praises start, Lord. Like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and you thought of me. You thought of my family, my loved ones, near and far, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your promises right now, Lord, for your healing power in this bread today because you are the bread of life. You are the bread of healing, Lord. You are the bread, Lord, that gives us life and life more abundantly. We thank you, Jesus, for the healing power that is in this bread today, Father. As we bless this bread, Lord, we pray for mighty miracles to take place, creative miracles, Lord, not only in our lives, that it will transform our families. Because you are the promise keeper, Lord. We believe today, Father, as we bless this bread and bless each and everyone's bread today, Lord. Lord, as we eat together, Lord God, transform us on the inside and let it go into a very the very cellular levels and deliver us, Lord God, from every, everything that is hidden deep down in our lives and our hearts, Lord, and bring healing and restoration and wholeness in every part of us as we eat together in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads, Lord God. As we hold this cup today, we are the most blessed people across the nations, Lord. That we can hold this cup, Lord God, and remember the precious blood, the royal blood, the perfect blood, Lord, that was poured for us, Lord. 
Lord, we believe today, Father, that there is healing not only to our lives, Lord, but healing to this city, healing to this nation, healing to nations around the world, Lord. Because what can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We receive and celebrate victories, Lord. Victories, Lord, that every disease, every COVID-19 will leave, Lord. Because, Lord, this is the greatest vaccination, Lord, that we can ever have, Lord. Your blood speaks, Lord, of your greatness and your power, your glory and your love as we drink together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't forget. <clears throat> the prayer meetings, church. Uh, transformation meetings. Lives are being transformed. Is um, Church, great and powerful things are happening. Emma, you're there, Emma. Do you want to share a little bit of what happened today? Or? If you want to. Uh, just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Just, um, yeah, okay. Emma didn't want us to. Um, or, you tell the story anyway. You, you didn't okay. do it. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is what we said before. <laughs> All right. Hello. 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 She's turning my mic off intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to have words later. <laughs> Blessings, of course. Um, today, I... Oh, okay. Um, yesterday in the transformation meeting, um, I jumped in and I asked prayer for a situation that I was um, going into today. So um, I was actually taking uh, my daughter to see her dad who's in prison, um, who will be there for a very long time. Um, it's been a decision I've really wrestled with. Um, as I'm sure some of you might be able to understand. Um, I had made uh, a decision out of peace. I felt that it was a, a peaceful. I'd come to that peacefully. Um, but during the week, um, knowing that I was going today, um, it was coming up and I knew to seek prayer for it. Um, and I was really blocked. Um, every time I'd jump on a meeting, or I just couldn't... I just. There was like um, an air of embarrassment or a bit of shame around it or it was like, no, I'll just deal with this one or um, possibly knowing that what I might hear wouldn't be what I, the decision I had made, um, you know. Uh, yeah, because when you seek that guidance, sometimes the answer you get isn't always the one you've made up in your mind and that was, I, I think, the case. So, um, yeah, last... Five minutes of Zoom uh, yesterday, of course, beautiful people joined around. Corporate anointing kicked in. Um, thank you to everyone who prayed for me. And uh, it was a couple of prayers, a couple of things that really sort of stood out, um, especially when Pastor Angel was praying. And um, he had said in prayer, yeah, not don't. Um, not to let anything come between my calling, um, if that was the way it was said, or was, you know, nothing to block my calling. You know, don't don't let it, yeah, don't let anything come in. Try and take that calling. Um, and the other was that to close the doors that need to be closed. So today we've gone, um, we've gone. And it's a drive, so we've driven the hour, gotten over there. Um, of course, my daughter, you know, going with this is. Yeah. So we got over there and um, nothing really should have gone wrong. Yeah, nothing, and it did. Um, we were blocked. Um, it turns out, so I had taken a full sleeve of ID. As you can imagine, I've, I've actually gone to visits prior. So I know the protocol for it. I've taken everything to make sure oh, we're going to get through. We're not going to get over there and be disappointed. And um, we got over there and it turns out the one that my... Medicare was a month out. I thought, okay, well, I've still got enough to cover me. And she said, look, if you've got your um, key card, you, you'll be right. So, of course, we all carry a key card with us. I said, yeah, no worries, it's in the car. 
it's not in the car. It's not in the car. I thought, you're kidding. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I thought, okay, okay, yep, so it's not in the car. Um, funnily enough, as I was leaving um, my mum's house this morning, we left from there, um, I walked down the hall to the room that we had slept in and I opened the door and the, the wallet was in the entrance of the door. I didn't see the wallet. I closed the door. I went, that wallet contained the key card that blocked the visit. It was simple as that and, um, yeah, it's, it would be very truthful to say that I was a little upset. I mean, obviously, not on the surface. Um, I was a little bit angry. I thought, oh. Um, and I guess probably within half an hour, I'd really come to the conclusion um, with explanation to my five-year-old, you know, I said that this is um, a move of God. And there may have been something there that may have not liked us being there. Or, um, yeah, then I explained it obviously in child-friendly child, child friendly terms. Um, but just, the, just, that, just that instant power, um, just that instant change of actually um, bringing something that I was holding close to me, thinking it so, you know, this is something I need to deal with and then actually exposing it in the transformation meeting, knowing that the effect it may have when it hit that anointing. And it did and... Um, it did and it totally shifted the events that happened today and it's God ordained. Um, I still question, you know, that, that humanly question. I thought, well, what was it? You know, what was it? What, what would that visit have impacted? But that's not for me to know right now because I don't have that answer. All I know is that I came and I, I said, God, let it be your will. Let it be your will. I submit to your will, not mine. Let it be your will. And I've woken up every single morning this week with that is just let me submit to you, not my kingdom, your kingdom, not my will, your will. And um, I was led in a direction today I didn't see coming. I didn't think what happened and it did. So um, it's, it's for sometimes the reasons that we can't see. And, um, yeah, there's, just, there's an anointing. So it's, it's a real suggestion too to to bring those things into places like the transformation meeting where sometimes these ugly parts about ourselves we want to keep quiet because we don't want people to see that ugliness. Yeah. But it's in giving that up that it becomes beautiful. Amen. So, yeah. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> if you. If you listen to church, try and get to the transformation meeting. She, she had to battle it for about a week to come the last five minutes. You know, we are there from about 6 to 12 o'clock, the last five minutes that she came in for prayer. And I believe that God protected her from and her child entering into that place. That's what I've seen because the prayers that we came in were very strong. And, and uh, you need the body of Christ. The transformation meeting is a, no different to the Antioch church. Or, you know, we have it daily from 6 to 7.30 and 6 hours on Saturday for those who do not know. And we've been doing it for 24 years and taking communion every day. So uh, God needs the body of Christ to come together. Even Peter was in jail. His head would have been cut off. You would read the whole story. But the Antioch church got together and they prayed earnestly. And he came knocking at the door. You know, you know the story. Um, but it's the body of Christ getting together. They broke bread daily. That's why we break bread daily. And God is doing something mightily. It's living up to the name, transformation meetings. We change it to living up. Okay, don't so try and get it for the transformation meetings and also your tithes and offering church. The bank account number, those on Zoom or YouTube, it's on our website. And all those who have been standing, you know your name. All those who have been putting the money in, bless you a thousand times. God, as he has promised, Deuteronomy 111. And those who cannot give, God bless you that you'll be able to give. I mean, but planting a seed, you receive a harvest. It's, it's always like that. Whatever seed you plant, you get, get a harvest. Because we are taking it now to the nations around the world. And uh, all the seeds that you have planted in this place, yes, souls have been, I mean, Emma's testimony is one out of a hundred, thousands really, for the last 24 years. Praise God. Give the Lord a clap and all yours. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've got to move this out of the way because 
Cameraman wants to make sure that he can keep up with me tonight because he's not happy with you because you're the worst one in the world. I am on the white shot. I'm on camera too anyway. So. I was talking to somebody this morning and I won't begin just because it's privilege. I won't say who it is. Her initials are Charmaine. And so I was talking to her about about when we come into this place, we should come to be in his presence, mm -hmm. not to get his presence. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. So when we come here, I mean, he's got a sack full of presents for us, but we should come to be in his presence. Oh, yeah, very good. And then he will give us mm. the presence Yes. that he has for us. But don't come just because he's got presents. <laughs> come because you'll be in his presence. A man can't, gets out of the shower and he's in standing in front of the mirror looking at himself. And as he's doing that, as it would, the wife walks in and she says, what are you doing? He said, well... <laughs> Look, look at me. I, I feel. I just feel lousy. I'm, I'm overweight. I'm out of shape. I just feel bad. Can, can you say something encouraging? She said, "Of course I can." Well, round is a shape, <laughs> and your eyesight's perfect. <laughs> the message tonight is full measure. That prayer you prayed before, the message tonight is full measure. Yeah. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13 says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In J.B. Phillips it says, that measure of development which is meant by the fullness of Christ. Whatever God does for you, you have to know it's not a half measure that he's going to do or the promises he's made to you are not half measure promises. He's not into it will do. He's not into just enough. And Father, I pray right now that every ear would be open, every heart would be open, every mouth would be shut in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really mean to say that. <laughs> that just fell out. That was just... Stuff happens sometimes. Maureen's making a note. Look at Maureen. She's not doing this now. <laughs> That's a nice shade of red she's wearing, though. Let me right now. I've got a story. We've got to follow this story through, and I promise I, will do, I won't digress too far. Genesis 15. You'll know the story. Genesis 15 too. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me? See <laughs> the presence again. What will you give me seeing I go childless? It was a fair question because it, in those days, you had, it's a bit like the royal family. You know, the, the name got passed on and the house got passed on and everything got passed on to the heir. What will you give me? As I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus, not my kid. But he's the heir of my house because you've not given me offspring. Indeed, the one born in my house is my heir. So this child was born in his house but not from his seed. So he's saying to God, how's this going to work? What's, what's going to happen to my family? And God said, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, 
this one, Eleazar, shall not be your heir. Then the promise. But one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. So there's his promise. Now, if God's ever given you a promise, make sure it's God giving you the promise. God gave Abraham that promise and he knew it was God. He heard loud and clear. God had a plan for Abraham. Abraham didn't know the whole deal at this point in time. Abraham would have a natural born child, natural born son from his own body. He would have offspring to carry his name and the plan of God into way down there. Genesis 16, 1 to 3. Now Sarai, before she became Sarah, Abraham's wife had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abraham, look, nothing's going on here. It's just not happening. I know what God said to you, but he probably meant for you Tell you what I'll do. This is legal and above board in our house, in our land. This is the way it happens. You can have my maidservant. You can have her. She, you can go into her. I can't imagine this conversation today in any household, right? <laughs> that you can have our cleaner that comes every week. <laughs> well, I can't give you any kids. She's pretty good at housework. <laughs> go into her. See how good you go. So Abraham <laughs> heeded the voice. Sometimes, guys, you've got to question your wives. But he heeded the voice of Sarai and then went in. Abraham took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. She gave her to her husband to be his wife. It's all legal and above board, right? It's all cool. After Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan, Abraham knew what God had said. Sarah obviously knew what God had said. But now they're going, well, nothing's happened, so God's busy somewhere else. Let's, let's get this happening. Sometimes we get a word from God and we know it's God. And we totally believe it and understand it. But we've got our own time scale. We've got our own schedule. We know when this should be happening. And now is a good time. Now is perfect. For everything God has in store for us. <laughs> but the timeline, we don't know what lies ahead. We don't know why God won't let us go and visit Emma. We don't know. We just know in our heart it's the right thing to do. This one, he knew it was the right thing to do. He had to wait is what he should have done. But let's see. Because if we, don't, if we take matters into our own hand, the result of our action, if we ever take God's promise into our own hand, the result will never be good. Trust me. We all remember the story of Saul's unlawful sacrifice caused by his impatience, simple impatience on waiting for God to act according to what he knew the word of God was because a prophet who was a known prophet and a spot on prophet said to him, 1 Samuel 13, He'd been told, I'll be there and we'll do this. And your kingdom will be established. It'll happen. So wait for me. That was the prophet. Then he waited the seven days according to the time set by Samuel. Samuel said, I'll be there in seven days. Oh, this is a long seven days. Oh, really? Things are going on. He's looking for Samuel, knows Samuel. He's, uh, he looks at his seven-day watch. He goes, yeah, he's not here yet. Saul said, tell you what, priest, bring a burnt offering and peace offering here to me. <clears throat> and he offered the burnt offering. He off isn't it good to offer God stuff, to worship God and do the right thing? To isn't it good? Yeah. Of course it is. Huh? <laughs> Who would have thought that making offerings to God would cause so much strife? You think it's going to be great? I'm offering God. I'm doing God's stuff. I'm doing God's service. I'm doing good for God. My heart's right. But surely that's what God would want. Samuel 
1 Samuel 13, 9. Now it happened. As it would, as soon as he had finished <laughs> doing the offering, on the seventh day that he promised he'd be there, guess who shows up? Samuel. Mm-hmm. 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 And what have you done, Saul? Well, you weren't here at breakfast on the seventh day. It's afternoon now. I've been waiting all day for you. You're late. So I went ahead. Ah, is that what you did? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, did he just say, that's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. It's, you've only done what I was going to do anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> no. And Samuel said, what have you done? Not, what have you done? It's like, what have you done? 1 Samuel 13, 11. Now, you can just, but, but I'm sorry. I, I honestly thought you were, I thought you got lost. I thought the, the Uber driver didn't show up and you're late. And I, I don't know. I just thought it was the right thing to do. Because I knew we had to make a sacrifice, otherwise things would have gone wrong. 1 Samuel 13, 11. Saul said, when I saw the people were scattered from me and you did not come as the day as you said, pass the blame, not my fault, it's your fault, you were the one that's late. And the Philistines are gathered together. Then I said, "Ah, the Philistines are going to come down and kill us. No, they won't. Therefore, watch this. When you're waiting for God, therefore I felt compelled to make the sacrifice. Ah, I couldn't help myself. The devil made me do it. You bet bet he did. (laughs) I couldn't help myself. I had to, I just had to do it. I felt like, oh, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. No, not going to happen here. You see, we feel compelled sometimes to push God's hand. We know he's told us what he wants us to do. We know he's told us, you've got a ministry, you've got a this, you've got a that. Well, you better not feel so compelled that you push that button so hard that you end up with nothing because that's what Saul ended up with, nothing. He said, bad Saul, bad Saul. You've done foolishly and you've not kept the commandment of the Lord, your God, which he commanded you. But now your kingdom shall not continue. I mean, it's not just, that's okay, God's a gracious God, he'll forgive you, Look, it's okay. Hope you've learned your lesson today. No, it's like you are finished. Your ministry kaput. What? Yeah, done. Your kingdom is being taken off you and given to another, a man who has God's own heart, who goes after. Saul could have, would have, should have, but didn't. Who knows what would have happened if Saul had just waited? I don't know. He didn't. And God was preparing David because God knew. So more important than the word God gives you is the timing for his word when God gives you something. More important than just the word. Wait upon the word. Wait for it to happen. Genesis 16, 4 again. Abraham went to Hagar and she did conceive. Hey, cool. Come having my baby. Why not? No. So he, his mistress became... When she fell pregnant, when the mistress fell pregnant, all of a sudden the relationship between her and her mistress changed. That caring, loving, wonderful, we're all sweet relationship, when she had conceived, she despised her mistress in her eyes. Look at me, na 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 na. I got what you can't have, na 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 na. Who's the most important? Be careful with your ministry that you don't go looking around at others who are doing a similar ministry, or go up to people and say, "God spoke to me. Has He spoken to you yet?" 
Are you okay? You mean you haven't got a word from God for your ministry yet? Whoa, I have. <laughs> if we have to be a little more patient and let the Lord do what he wants, we will not be disappointed with the result. We don't want to be disappointed with the result. You don't want to be disappointed with the result, Zoom people. You want to know that God is speaking. Yeah, Zoom people. Okay. <laughs> Just put the camera on this young lady. <laughs> she sees the camera, she goes. Pew, pew. So speaking about Sarah, God said to Abraham in Genesis 17, 16, I, because this is where he says, now we've got problems, God. But hey, God, look, we've got problems going on in the house. And God goes, duh, I knew that had happened. I will bless her. Talking about Sarah now, God said, I will bless her and give you a son by her. Oh, really? You mean we didn't have to, and we Oh, then I will bless her and she'll, she shall not only give her a son, she will be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be from her. Then Abraham fell on his face. You'd think to say, oh God, I'm so... No, he fell on his face and laughed. <laughs> You're going to be kidding me. Seriously. God, you are a funny God. You are hilarious. God, shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? I mean, remember the mirror thing? Really? 100 years old, God. And Sarah, who is 90 years old, shall she bear a child? Really? It's been a long time, God. I mean... You can't just run down to the chemist and it's not those days. It, was, it had to be God, right? And the thing, like Abraham in this scripture, he goes, I, I can't believe that, nearly. And sometimes God might give you such a word, you go, that's, like, that's really hilarious. I'm the furthest thing from that could ever happen, like go out back for three weeks and do stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> but God's timing, God's timing and it will be perfect. In God's time, the people, the places, the plans, the purpose, the miracles, the signs, the wonders will be perfect in his time in Jesus' name. Genesis 17, 18, Abraham said to God, because he was worried about Ishmael, he said, but I've already got a son because he's my son. So what are you going to do with him? I don't worry about him, says God. Oh, that Ishmael might live. This is, sorry, Abraham said to God, oh, you're going to give me a son, but look, here's Ishmael. Oh, that Ishmael might be the one for you. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I've already got one. Look what I did. <laughs> Wasn't I clever? <laughs> uh, and God goes, mm, nah. For my thoughts, it says in Isaiah 55, are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways says the Lord. So when God gives you something, don't go trying to work it out because you can't even nearly think like God can. You can't plan like God can. You can't dream like God can. Doesn't matter what you think of or dream or think how good or bad you are. That's not how God thinks. And that's not how God thinks of you. My thoughts aren't, my my thoughts are not your thoughts for my thoughts are higher than the earth. And shall, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing in which I sent it, for which I sent it. So when God has given you that promise, you've got to trust God. He will bring it to pass in his time, in his way, the way he's planned it. So God's response to Abraham when he said, but look, here's Ishmael. You, you, you can have Ishmael. We'll do it with Ishmael, right? God said, no. No. Sarah, your wife, shall bear your son. And you shall call him Isaac. 
I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. So the plan he's got for Isaac is not what he had planned for Ishmael. But an everlasting covenant, a huge plan, not just a, just a little bit, a huge plan. So when God does it, you better know that God has a greater idea for his plan than you could even think or dream about. Genesis 18, 9 says, Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? This is when the angels were coming to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember that? So they show up. And they said to Abraham, where's Sarah, your wife? He said, "Uh, she's here in the tent. And the angel said, I will certainly return to you at the time of life, according to the time of life. That is how pregnant time, right? And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent which was behind him. God reaffirmed his word to Abraham again. So if you've got a word from the Lord that you really believe is true, especially if it's something powerful, directional, you better know that he's going to tell you more than once. He doesn't want you running off half cock with some idea, making up what he meant. He's going to make it clear to you and he's going to make it clear by two or three witnesses. Not by one outspoken car park prophecy. (laughs) It'll be known and you will know in your heart that that's God. That's from God and it'll be confirmed and affirmed. Genesis 18, 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. Well advanced in age. We know that 90s and 100s, right? Therefore, Sarah's turn... (laughs) I just heard God tell him that. (laughs) That is just so funny. (sighs) Sarah laughed within herself. Not quite as obvious as that. (laughs) And she said in herself, after I have grown old, I love this. Now, this is Bible. Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, also being old? I mean... (laughs) Really? Not going to happen. Just be careful because God hears every thought. God hears every thought. Because the Lord said to Abraham, why is Sarah laughing? And she was laughing within herself. Not ruffle. It was within herself. No? Oh, for the oldies, rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> oh, pardon me. <laughs> Oh, that feels better. <laughs> Who knows what that was? But I hope it doesn't stain. Abraham, you can blame Norm for that one. Norm, you should bottle that. <laughs> I've lost my place, and you can understand why I would. Lord said, to Abraham. Why did Sarah laugh, saying, I shall surely, shall I surely bear a child since I am old? God said, is anything too hard for me? So you think what God's told you, that's impossible. You're not in the right place. You don't have no money. You don't seem to fit the bill. Is anything too hard for God, regardless of what he tells you? At the appointed time, God said, I will return to you according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. That's those angels again, see? And we know it's the a, a, a Lord visiting. So, bang. They, they've spoken. God has spoken. God's affirmed. Sarah knows. She's in trouble. It's what Sarah knows. She's probably putting the perfume on. Oh, tonight's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Genesis 21, 1 says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. She conceived. Boing! Not like the Holy Spirit thing. This is like 
man and wife thing conceived. Shock horror for both of them, I imagine. <laughs> and she bore Abraham a son. <laughs> in his old age. At the set time. Can you imagine her going around town, guess what, girls? Oh, I'm pregnant. <laughs> what have you been up to? No, 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 it was him. <laughs> it was him, all right. Don't worry about that. Everything's right and fancy here. In his old age and at the set time of which God had spoken. When the timing's right, all will be right. It doesn't matter how old you are, old people. Amen. God's got work for us to do. That's why we're here. That's why we're listening. That's why we're speaking. That's why we're teaching the young ones. We're imparting wisdom. Young ones, as soon as the old one speaks, don't go, no, 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 not listening, not listening, not listening. You don't know anything, no, 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 no. No, go, wow, God just might use this crazy person to speak to me. Maybe I need to listen. No, it's Paul, it's all right. <laughs> but God's timing is perfect in all things, know that. God's timing is perfect, Zoom people. Genesis 21, 3, 7. People are going to say, that church is crazy. They... <laughs> They talk to people at the back of the hall. There's this little group of people they call Zoom people. <laughs> what sort of church is that? I don't know, but I'm going there. <laughs> All things are possible, <laughs> even in Zoom land. Genesis 21.3, Genesis 21.3. Abraham called the name of his son that Sarah brought to him Isaac, and Abraham circumcised him. Now, I, this is it. Get the deal, right? Now, Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born. So he's 99 when Isaac went, and she was 90. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. You better believe it. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a child? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Basically, she's saying beyond his time and <laughs> glory to God. There was a promise. See, Genesis 21, 3, 7 tells the story of Hagar and Ishmael then. And that's too long a story to go because I've only got pages to go. So we'll do that another day. But God still blessed them because of Abraham. Because that child Ishmael was the son of Abraham and God made a promise to Abraham. Abraham screwed up. But God still blessed him and God made a promise. Don't you worry, I will make a great nation of him as well. And he said that the angel came to Hagar and Hagar was saying, well, now what? She's kicked me out. Well, of course she kicked you out. You're treating her like garbage. Maybe if she had a bit of respect. No, that didn't work. So they got kicked out and Hagar and Ishmael are out there and they're crying and she took Ishmael over and put him under a cherubim tree. <laughs> and the angel said, what's going on? Well, we've been kicked out. And got, no, don't worry, I'm going to make a great nation. And you look at what's happening in the Middle East today because of that whole situation. I'm not going to go down the politics of it. You don't have to. It's just the word of God. Everything we're seeing in the Middle East today is that, that division. That's where it all is. That's where it started and it's still going on today. And isn't that a great nation? Aren't the Palestinians a great nation? Ishmael, that's where it all started. We're not going down there today. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes, the thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. abundantly. Not just have some life, not just have a little blessing, a little blessing party, but God, whatever God has a promise for you, you better know it's bigger and better than even you can imagine. Amen. It's abundant. When God says he's going to give you something, watch this space. Amen. Genesis 23, 1. Sarah lived 127 years. So she's now lived 127 years. She was 91 when she had 
Isaac. 30 years on, she lived. That's very good. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And so Sarah died in Kirjath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn to Sarah and to weep for her. He's lost his wife, the love of his life, the one that bore his God-promised child. So if she's lived till that long, Abraham was 137 when Sarah died. You with me? Do your sums, folks, right? Because it says here, Sarah lived 127 years. So Abraham was 10 years older than her, 100. So Sarah lived an extra 37 years. So Abraham was 137 when Sarah died. He was 100 when she fell pregnant. So we see abundant life here. He's now, but that's not all they've got. That's not the end of Abraham's story. Look at this. Genesis 24.1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. That's nice. In Romans 4.19 it says, Abraham did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead. That was when he and Sarah came together. Since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. So between them both in the flesh, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. There was no unbelief with Abraham, even though he was... He went and did the fleshy thing. He still believed it was going to happen, but he thought, well, maybe God will do this. Because he said to God, oh, well, we've done it. You're a bit slow, so we did it. Here's Ishmael. God went, no, 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 that wasn't what I meant. Nice try. (laughs) That wasn't what I meant. Romans says, for he grew strong in the faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Are you fully convinced of whatever it is God has promised you? Everybody, are you fully convinced the words you've got, even the ones you put on the shelf, the ones you haven't thrown out in the garbage bins we had this morning, garbage, garbage, and some of them need to be thrown out. (laughs) But Not sure, on the shelf. But pray over them. Know that God's still not forgotten who you are, where you live and what you do. And what plans he's got for you. He's got plans for you all. Then, after the death of Sarah, when we know by scriptures that Abraham was 137, the miracle hasn't finished yet. Genesis 25, 1, 2. Abraham again took a wife. After Sarah has died... 137, he took a wife. This is the same guy that couldn't even dream about having a baby 40 years ago, prior. He took a wife and her name was Keturah and she bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. This is the guy that couldn't have a baby 40 years ago. Now he's spitting him out like he's having, I don't know. When God blesses you and gives you a miracle, you better know it hasn't finished when it started. It's moving on and on. What he knew he was going to have a child, he got married and he had kids coming everywhere at him. Who's kidding you? Daddy. Oh, really? (laughs) Who's your mum? (laughs) Because Abraham gave gifts to the sons of the concubines. He had his other wife, new wife, and concubines. The guy's gone crazy. 
Need to have babies all over the place. You've got a new wife and concubines. He's 140 and she's saying, no, no, I've got a headache. Oh, really? That's all right. I don't know how it works. Right? I'm just telling you what Scripture says. But when I, when I was looking at this, I thought, man, the guy didn't even think it. 40 years ago, didn't think he could have a baby. And God said, I've got a plan. And I'm going to do a miracle where you're going to have a baby. Well, that miracle, it wasn't like a one-off miracle. And that's my point for you. God's call on you is not one-off. Point done. Oh, that's it. I'm going to sit down now. No, because God's only charging you up. It's like stick that ever-ready battery in there. Kabing. Well, the battery's only the start of it because then you're going to get energised, charge, charge, and you're going to get fulfilled. You're going to get empowered. You're going to open your mouth and stuff's going to come out you haven't even thought of. Because it's going to be God speaking through you. It's going to be God touching people's lives. It's going to be God working through you. It's not going to be you. It's going to be God. Amen. And you're going to be so busy, you're not even going to have time to take the glory. <laughs> One touch from God and he supercharged Amen. Abraham. And Abraham was flying high. Glory! A new wife and multiple concubines <laughs> bearing children. Who would have thought? Genesis 25, 7, the sum of the years of Abraham's life was 175. He had a second life. He was dead at 100. The Bible said so. He was as good as dead in the body at 100. He lived 75 more years. It was a whole new life. Whole new life, whole new wife, lots of concubines, <laughs> lots of kids. He just kept it going. And I'll tell you what, we still talk about him today. Amen. But not about him, about what God did with him. Amen. Don't you want when you're dead and buried, when you've had your long life, that people are going to say, wow, Belinda, man, she touched heaven and she touched <laughs> earth and she, all she had to do was speak and people fell down under the anointing and they got healed and write books about it. They have to write books because they're not going to believe it in real life. I go, you're not talking about that, Belinda, right? Oh, you better believe I'm talking about this. But she can't even stand in front of a camera, Zoom people. 2 Corinthians 9.8, the Passion Translation says, God is more than ready to overwhelm you. He wants to overwhelm you. He doesn't want to... Just don't want to give you a little something. He wants to overwhelm you people with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything. Not some things, more than enough of everything. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Why? Because you're not doing it for you. You're not doing it that your name, Wesley, will be glorified. You're doing it for his name to be glorified. You open your mouth and God speaks and gets glorified. (laughs) God wants you to have more than enough, not just enough. Not that'll be enough. God's not stingy. God's not stingy. He's pretty good. You might not get it when you expect it. You might not get it the way you thought you'd get it. You might not even get what you want. If you're open to him, you'll get what he wants of you in his time for you, according to his blessings over you in his abundance. He's not a cheap and stingy God. It doesn't matter if he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's not into butchery, so he's going to keep them. John 2.10 says, and everyone brings out the choice wine first. Now, remember this. This is just to show you. It's not just Abraham. Remember Jesus at the wedding. When God does a miracle, he does a miracle. Amen. He's at a wedding. They run out of booze. It's only in the Bible. They run out of plonk. Mary says, I need another drink. 
do what he tells you. That's the, 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 my version of the Bible. <laughs> but Mary says, whatever he tells you, do it. And he says, nah, <laughs> not, not yet. I'll just do it. Do, do your trick. Do your party thing. Go on. Do, go on. <sighs> All right. Bring me, the, bring me the things full of water. No, I don't, I don't know why. He, I don't even know why he did it, right? Doesn't, and do you know that you can say, why did God do that through her? Why did God do that through her? None of your business. We love that in this church. None of your beeswax. Not only that, but it doesn't matter why. It really doesn't matter why. The fact is he chose to. Jesus chose to honour his mother and not to embarrass her because she's spoken out loud. Whatever he tells you, do it. Well, what if you say, well, I don't tell you to do anything. <laughs> oh, well, your mother said. Anyway, he honours his mother and he turns the water into wine. Now, the chief steward, whose head is on the platter if he mucks this up, he goes and he knows what's happened. He knows they've got water in those pots. And Jesus said, now serve it out. Take, oh, sorry, the, 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 the guys who did that, take it to the chief steward. They know it's water when they got it. So they take it out, take it to the chief steward, and the chief steward's eyes light up. <laughs> Get out of here, really? And he says, everyone brings out the choice wine first, then the cheap junk, after they've had a little too much to drink. But you have saved the best to last. You've got to know that what it, you've got to know that whatever God's got in store for you is the best. It's not second rate. It's not okay. It is the best. He doesn't want to give you a little cottage down the street of drag. Location, location, location and the mansion. It's not the worst house in the best street. It's your mansion in the best heaven ever. And he's preparing that for you. He's not preparing a dump for you. But he's not got a dump here for you either. He's got your heart and he's going to make you that he's going to, he loves you so much. He's pouring out for you. Uh, and God says, only the best will do for my children. You deserve only the best. And as a parent, isn't that what you want to give your kids? I mean, we can't all do that. But we just want to give our kids the best. And you know something? It's not a competition, parents. When it comes to the kids, it's not a competition. The kids think it's a competition, but we know it's not. When you've got a wife like mine who gives Christmas presents, she adds them up, man. If I've got 10 cents too much, then I've got to buy that child something else because they haven't got... They won't know. That you, they won't know you've got that at a Target special. It's normally $60 and you got it for 10 Yeah, but I only paid 10 And then you lay it all out in the bed in their names and the parcels look bigger. Well, of course it does because you just bought that kid who got a really expensive, cheaper toy and another thing. Now you've got to buy these other kids who got expensive toys. She's gorgeous. Where was I up to? John 6, 19 says, yeah, this is the other miracle. John 6. So here we are. Jesus is preaching. Out in the country, the crowds have followed him. Lunchtime. So what does he do? He grabs somebody, they bring a little boy up and say, this kid's got lunch, we're going to mug him, we're going to steal it off him, what do you want to do with it? What's he got? Uh, some bread and fish. Yeah, just take it off him. <laughs> but tell him not to worry because he'll be all right. Then Jesus took the loaves and he gave thanks. Whatever God is giving for you, you've got to know that he's thankful for the miracle of you. He's actually thankful for you that you've stood up there saying, this is all I've got. Is it enough? Can you use this? It's my lunch, but that's all I've got. Can you use it, Jesus? You've got to know that he says, thank you for what you bought. And boy, can I use it. Stand back. Stand back. 
you stand back and watch what I can do with this. He said, and he blessed it, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his father. He said, look what we've got, Dad. Perfect. Exactly what we need. And we, then he broke it, and he shared it out. He got everybody, and he shared it all out. Then he said to his disciples, now go up and go and pick up the bits that are left. Twelve baskets full of leftovers. When he made a miracle, he made it so abundant that everybody left there fat and full. Boy, I haven't eaten like that for years. Oh, wow, and I didn't even see the truck come with all that. Boy, oh, I couldn't have eaten another fish head if you'd forced it down my throat. And they all roll down the hill as they go on home. Boom, 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 boom. And then Jesus preached on gluttony. <laughs> you see, when God does a miracle, you've got to know there's going to be more than even you can handle. There's going to be leftovers. People around you are going to be touched by the miracle he does in your life because it's going to springboard off you. It can't just fill you up. It's going to pour out like... Wow, fish and buns, yum. That's what we need. But God's going to pour it out and people are going to be touched and people are going to be changed and there's going to be healings because of what God's put in you. Because it's not just enough, it's way above enough. And no one went home hungry. When people are in your presence because of what God's done in your life, no one will leave your presence hungry. They're going to know who the living God is. Zoom people, living God in your life. In Jeremiah 1.12, Jehovah said to me, and this is when God has spoken, Thou, he said, what do you see, Jeremiah? I can't remember what he said because I didn't put it down here. But he said, you've seen well, for I watch over my word to perform it. And we hear that often. And you've got to know that when God speaks, <clears throat> this is why you've got to make sure it's God. Wait for the, you know, it'll happen. It'll be with you. God will speak to you. When God speaks, he will not let his word return void. He won't give you something. He knows what you're going to do with it. He actually knows he can trust you. Why would he waste it on you? See, God's not wasteful. He's not going to give you a word then turn around to the guys in heaven and say, well, that was a wasted prophecy for her. Girl, I know she's going to blow it. No, he's going to speak to you. He's going to enable you. He's going to empower you. He's going to fire you up and you're going to be his servant just the way you asked to be. Lord, make me yours. Fill me, wash me, cleanse me. And Luke 6.38, he will give it to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It will be given to your bosom. For the same measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. I've got a prayer to pray over you if you'd like to stand or sit or fly in Zoom land, whatever you want to do. I just pray that God speaks to your heart. And God speaks individually to each and every one here because he is a God of the individual. He is the God who created you. And you've got to know what he did for Abraham. Oh, no, I won't say what I just thought. I thought the well, last thing we want is the 70 and 80 year olds having babies. That would be too scary. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, I'm going to pray this prayer. Come straight out of Ephesians. Maureen's shuddering. <laughs> No, please, don't, don't listen to him, God. That's a bit like in the court when the, when the judge says to the jury, ignore what they said. Well, they can't. They just heard it. Huh? <laughs> Ephesians 3. I'm going to pray it. I pray in reverence before the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, God, the first and ultimate Father, 
May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energised with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling in your innermost being and personality so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and height and depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing, endless love and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes or dreams according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hold on to your promises and dreams in God, church. I believe God really believed those words and dreams that have been spoken over your life today. I believe God is going to activate those, those on Zoom, on YouTube, anywhere around. Just believe that the words are going to come to pass Amen. and see the fire of God upon those dreams and words that have been prophesied over your life. Take, pick up, pick up them, stir up the giftings and the calling. The vision lives, church. Let the fire burn again. Amen. Amen. Don't let the vision die. Light the fire again. Praise God. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, thanks, Paul. What an awesome message. Give the Lord another clap for the message. Thank you, Lord.